As I stood on the brink of my first day of middle school, I, like countless other students, grappled with the unease that comes with stepping into a whole new world of learning. Most students would have feared navigating the labyrinth of halls, or making new friends, or dealing with the challenges of more demanding studies. Unlike my peers, though, my fear was unparalleled, anxiety-ridden, and borderline embarrassing. What I feared the most was my very own name. I identified at a very young age that there was a very quiet moment to be scrutinized between the lines on a freshly printed roster, in which a teacher brazenly chose to read a student's first name, or comparatively, their first and last. And I held my breath in my first period that day. And luckily for me, my teacher excitedly chose to read only first names off of her roster. Here, there was a Cassandra, and a Dominic, and a Vincent, and finally me, Anna, ending with two different letters, two corresponding syllables, and such American simplicity that it was almost too easy to pronounce. As my day continued, teachers continued with the same smart strategy of listing first name after first name off of their roster. And I could feel my anxiety finally wash away as I became truly excited to learn. That was, however, until I met the strict, stern, and ever-traditional Miss Padula. Miss Padula began her class as any other teacher did, by reading names off of her roster. Except this time, there was one key difference. Miss Padula read both first and last names. This time, there was a Kira Jones and an Alyssa Prickler and a Joanna Stevenson. And then finally, a pause, a squint, and my own trembling hands is the moment that I had dreaded all morning finally came into fruition. Anna. Triangle? She read off her roster, which isn't my name. As students mocked me, their laughs echoing in a deranged cacophony over my own self-confidence, I wasn't truly excited to learn anymore. Instead, I felt unalienated. My full name is Anna Teresa Maria Christopher Tringali. Not triangle, not treagle, not tringle, and certainly not triangle. Tringali is spelled T-R-I-N-G-A-L-E. And even as I wrote that line into my script then, Grammarly 2 told me that that was also wrong. Some people may argue that I obviously don't have it as bad as most people. For example, my own best friend's name is Hatsibe, and however you're trying to spell that in your heads is wrong. But no matter the degree of mispronunciation, the extreme feelings of discomfort are the same for millions of people globally. The widely experienced phenomenon of feeling disconnected from one's own identity because of the mispronunciation of their name is known as name-based identity alienation. Name-based identity alienation often causes one to feel extreme feelings of hurt, discomfort, and they often end up feeling very, very uncared for. As I, a student, sat in a classroom where the pronunciation of my name was continuously disregarded and disrespected, I experienced name-based identity alienation as a learner. I felt unaccepted and unheard in an environment where it was encouraged to speak up and participate. But why should I speak up and participate with you? Because when you speak to me, you cannot say my name. Name-based identity alienation extends across the whole world and affects millions of cultures. For many people, a name can be seen as a profound reflection of their cultural identity, heritage, and roots. And by consistently detaching a person from the core aspects of themselves, it is then that they begin to reflect upon feelings of discomfort, and it is then that they are alienated. Me personally, I felt alienated throughout multiple times in my life. And even children will learn at a very young age that by consistently diminishing and simplifying their identity, that they can then be seen as more readily acceptable by others. For those who adopt nicknames, 
They don't do it out of endearment. They do it out of convenience to prevent the embarrassment that comes along with correcting people on the pronunciation of their name, to prevent job-related setbacks and general miscommunication. And for those whose names are considered to be more non-Western in particular, this effect is amplified as their name can be seen as a reflection of their culture. And by mispronouncing it, it's seen as a lack of respect for their culture. And in multicultural settings, students from less represented backgrounds feel even less valued and less heard. When my great grandparents immigrated to America, they did it with nothing but four sets of clothing on their backs, a dream, and not a single lick of English on their tongues. In fact, when they entered the famous Ellis Island Immigration Station, they were filled with anticipatory hope of mixing their Sicilian upbringing with an American dream. But unlike the melting pot that their new country claimed to be, they instead found their Italian identity under scrutiny and discrimination. When my great-grandparents looked at the immigration papers in their hands, they could not speak English. They could not understand English, and they certainly couldn't read the print asking them for their printed last names. So when they were asked what their last names were, it was posed verbally, and the customs worker simply wrote down what they heard. T-R-I-N-G-A-L-E, Tringali, which is my last name, but that was wrong. The last name, T-R-I-N-G-A-L-E, was supposed to be T-R-I-N-G-A-L, I, but it was changed to seem more American, more simplistic, and more accepting to an insensitive society. The last name T-R-I-N-G-A-L-I -I, meant commander of a squadron of soldiers, but it also meant un-American, and that notion led to stereotypes. It led to fear. So it was changed to be T-R-I-N-G-A-L-E, which meant Americanized for others' conveniences. Why did my family have to permanently alter their last name in order to seem more acceptable to other people? Why should anybody's name lead to preconceived notions as to how they identify? And why should anybody be forced into alienating themselves from their identity because of their name? In a modern day society, it is actively encouraged to correct mispronunciation. I am one of many students backing my name, my identity a pledge, a declaration, stating that building healthy bonds with students and peers stems from saying their names correctly. And because of that, I have to ask you, what is the first thing that you identify about yourself in your youth? It is your name. It's how it's said, how it's pronounced, and how others identify you. Moreover, it's the first thing that you identify yourself as. So you should not have to feel frustratingly embarrassed when it comes to correcting other people on the pronunciation of your name. You deserve to feel respected. And you should not have to diminish that part of your identity for anybody. My name is Anna Tringali. And in many settings across the world, people's names are routinely mispronounced. And if you do not know how to say somebody's name, you should not be afraid to ask. If you do not know how to pronounce it, you should learn. And if you do not know how to say it, it is up to you to fix that. It is up to us to break down the boundaries, separating millions of people from their identities because of their name. And of course that will take fatigue, and of course that will take frustration, and that will take correcting your eighth grade PE teacher on the pronunciation of your name for the millionth time. But if we instill these actions now, we can prevent generations of cultural and identity disconnect. Last year, I was alienated from my identity by quotations in the school paper and the school's election ballot and substitute teachers. In fact, when I looked at the little words etched under my school's yearbook photo, they did not contain my name, but the misspelled Anna Triangles. Your name is your possession. 
It may be on a million other birth certificates as mine is, but out of the 154,996 words in the English language with the letter A in them, only one of them can have two A's situated so perfectly next to two N's. And out of the 1.6 million Annas walking the earth today, only one of them can be Anna Tringali. So this year, I'm choosing to take the identity of my name back. I'm choosing to fight against name-based identity alienation by basking in my own individuality. My name is Anna Tringali. It is not Anna Trongle. It is not Anna Tregale. And though triangles are the strongest shape, my strength is my identity. My full name is Anna Teresa Maria Christopher Tringali. And I am telling you to correct everybody who mispronounces your name. I beg you to never diminish your individuality for anybody else. And the next time somebody tries to take your identity away from you, take it back. Thank you.